All right, MC Tears. This is, I believe, the last video for this uh, for this huge monster super unit. Um, last video, but not the last lesson. To, uh, next day, next class, we're gonna have a little uh, of technology fun, and you'll get a little sneak peek uh, at what you'll be using at the end of the video. Um, but this is uh, the last video of this unit. Um, let's get into it. Factor each polynomial expression. So just some factoring, you know, half of this this unit, it feels like we've been factoring and we're just getting some practice. So I'm going to take a common factor of 2x. I always look for the common factor first. That's worth writing down. Look for, look for common factor first. Asterisk, asterisk. Um, take the 2x out, uh, x squared, and then minus 25. That's a difference of squares, so I get 2x, x minus 5, and x plus 5. Um, notice that I had to correct mine. I'm hoping that yours never printed off with the old version, which had a 6 there. I, I corrected that to a 3, I believe, is the correct version, and we want to factor this thing. And... This is one of those hard trinomials, and I know it's going to be, you know, 2 and 1, 1 and 2, but it's going to have an M here and an N here, an M here and an N here, but i got to figure out the numbers, and I can use any any number of different uh, techniques, whatever whatever you like. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, maybe I'll use uh, the breaking down the middle this time, maybe. And the idea is I'm going to break down the middle into two pieces um, and then go from there. Well, the two pieces are numbers, that it's the number game thing, numbers that multiply to get negative 6, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and add to get negative 5, and that's uh, minus 6 and 1, minus 6 and 1. Um, so I'll write 2m squared minus 6mn plus 1mn, and that's how I break down the middle. And then basically I factor by grouping, right? Uh, 2m can come out of the first part, and it looks like just an n will come out of the second part, and hopefully I'm left with the same thing, and I made a little goof there. Yeah, that's supposed to be a 3 n, and now I can see the common factor in the two terms, m minus 3n, and 2m plus n. Nice. Uh, that's a 1, and that's a minus 3, and that's a 2, and that's a 1. Some of you might be able to, to factor this by inspection, but that's pretty tough. One of these sort of hard trinomial ways is the way to go. And of course, c it looks because it's a uh, it's a cubic right it looks like a factor theorem question right this is what we did yesterday was was simplify polynomial expressions by factoring using the factor theorem and you can use the factor theorem right and this is what it looks like uh, you can pause the video and get this all down if this is the way you would like to do this but you know you call this f at x and then you tr you're trying to substitute values, and that give you zero because once you once you get a zero, you know it's not a, you know it is a factor. If it's not equal to zero, it's not a factor, and you're a sad face. And then you find something that gives you zero and a factor, and it's a happy face. And then you use long division. You got to do all that. That works out evenly, so you know it's a factor, and that that's all good. And you're starting to sweat a little bit, and then you write that, and you you get the the divisor times the factor, and you factor that, and you find the numbers that fit the number pattern in the factoring, and then you're, you know, you're happy that it all factored out nicely, but you're sweating, right? You're sweating hard because using the factor theorem to factor stuff is hard work. Sometimes you do. This, in this case, you don't. And watch this. This should have been a little bit of a hint here. You can actually factor this one by grouping. If I took x squared out of the first one and 
minus 4 out of the second one, I get the same thing. Right? And then I'm going to write x minus 3 there, x squared minus 4. That's a difference of squares. And not, you know, the big happy face and no sweating involved at all, right? That's much easier. Notice the problem is not all cubics can you do this. There's some cubics that you'll have to use the factor theorem, okay? Um, would I expect you to see that? Not always, not always. You should be able to do it using the factor theorem as well. But if you do, it's a ha if you see it and it works out that you can factor it by grouping, it is a big happy face, and that's a time saver. That was three steps rather than a whole page, right? Factor theorem's tough work. All right, what's the last thing to do? Now, this is this is exactly what we're talking about: graphing polynomial functions using various strategies. Well, this was the goal. That like this is what we started with. We said, okay, graph this. We used the calculator and we started looking about n behaviors, and then we started looking about zeros in factored form. Well. Now, it's not in factored form, but we can put it in factored form. In fact, this is the same one that we just did. What was it? What were the factors? Minus 2, minus 3, and positive 3. Or is it positive 2? Positive 2. x minus 2, x plus 3, and x plus 2. Uh, or did I goof that up? Is it a minus 3? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Minus 3. Yeah, okay. And this is from the three-minute review. We knew that, okay? Um, and so we know it's a cubic. Um, starts low and ends high because it's got a le leading coefficient is positive. Its x-intercepts are 2, 3, and minus 2. These are all what we would call slash roots because there's no squared on them. And so we can graph this very, very quickly. And this is this is where we started. I should have used a ruler there, but that's okay. Let's just keep going. Um, and I'm guessing that 2 is about there. 3 will be about there. Minus 2 is over here somewhere. And then we can uh, sketch. It starts low, ends high. We don't know how far to go with the bumps, but we don't really care because we're going to fill that in later. Um, usually we pick x equals 0, and then y equals 12, 0, 0, 0, 12. And that's the y-intercept, right? And we like to have the y-intercept. And that's the graph. Notice that if we wanted to, if we wanted to, we could, we could use the TI-83 to find the maximum minimums if we wanted to know everything about this. So I'm going to say... And we covered that this unit. We could use the TI-83 to find the max and min points. I'm not going to because we've practiced that quite a bit and it never asked us to. It asked us just to sketch the graph and there's a sketch of the graph and actually it's pretty darn good. All right, what's next? It says factoring allows us to find the x-intercepts of a function. Uh, then the graph is easy. But what happens if we can't factor this function? So, I mean, can't use grouping on this. If I call this f at x and start use, trying the factor theorem, I'm going to try f at 1, f at 3, f at minus 1, f at minus 3. And that's all the numbers that go into 3. And none of them, none of them equal 0. So that's a big sad worried face there. See, sad worried face, maybe even a tear, because we don't know what to do. This comes up once in a while, and when this happens, when this happens, you know what you should do. You should reach for the graphing calculator. Okay, we've graphed lots of these, um, lots of these, um, using the graphing calculators. This, this, uh, this unit, and so it should be no trouble getting around that. If we can't factor, can't factor, don't worry, use the TI-83. So I'm going to uh, fire that, that up. And we 
might have all sorts. Of, yeah, look at all the crud we have on here. Clear all that out. Got a whole bunch of crud on there. Must have done a regression or something at some point. I'm going to turn my plots off just by going up there and clicking on enter. Uh, turn all the plots off. And then I'm going to type in my, my um, polynomial function here. X cubed. Minus 3x squared minus 8x minus 3. Um, and I'm going to try zoom standard to start. Often it'll get cut off. But, yeah, see, this gets cut off on the bottom. Um, and it looks like there's lots of room here that... that, that um, I don't need so I could change the windows if I wanted to so notice I don't need all of the room on the left so maybe I'll make that go to five just so I can see more of the graph and I need to go down further so I need the X minimum to be better maybe I'll go to 80 maybe why not and I'm gonna graph that just to see what that looks like okay see now it looks like I'm going down too far I, and, and I could be here forever trying to get the right window settings, but I'm going to change it just because it looks like there might be two zeros there. And that would make sense because I'm expecting this to be able to factor into three brackets. Now, it might not always do that, but that's what I'm expecting. So let's maybe half of that should be fine, 40. Okay. And I'm, I'm worried about being able to see in there, so I might even change that just so I can see in there. Maybe the bottom of the graph is going to get cut off, but I need to get in there closer. That's a little, see there's a little bump there. I can see definitely there's a root there, a root there, and a root there. And that's all I wanted to do is find the x-intercepts. And um, how we do it, remember, is using the calc menu, the zero function. Okay, calc menu zero function. Uh, and then I'm asked for the left bound. Where am I? Where's the little spider? There I am. I'm going to go to the left of the first one. Press enter. Go to the right of the first one. Now notice I don't want that second root in there. So i got to make sure that I'm somewhere near the top of the bump. And then I'm going in the middle. Yes. And it looks like the first zero is negative 1.32-ish, 3.3. Um, I'm going to sketch this. Actually, what I'm going to do, just because I can, you'll, you're going to sketch it. I'm going to take a screenshot, paste it in there, blow this up a little bit, and then that one is 1 1.3, so I can say... That one's right there. And then I'm going to find this other one here. Back on the calculator. i got to go through it again. I want the zero. And then on the right side of that next zero. And in the middle. 0.47. Point four seven, and then this third zero is way over here. Second trace to get to the back to the calc menu. Zero, and I'm not going to want to scroll over there. I'm just going to put in one, two, three, four as the left bound. I'm going to put in six as the right bound. Six as the right bound. And five as the guess because it's going to be around five. Four point eight zero. Four point eight zero. And there's the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts are x is about equal to one point three three or negative, right, negative 1.33. X is about equal to negative, negative 0.47. X is about equal to 4.80. Now, that's pretty cool. That's, that, I mean, we did this before to find zeros, but 
what what I want to mention here is if I could factor it, this would have factored into three brackets like this. I also know that if I've got brackets like this, these numbers here are are the zeros. They're the x-intercepts. But now that I have the x-intercepts, I could, if I wanted to, go back and state the brackets. And in fact, in decimals, like this won't be exact because there was lots of decimals involved, these two things should be equivalent. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we expanded that and saw that, it, yeah, it is exactly the same. Well, I'm not going to make you do that. But what's really cool is that there's this there's this um, program, and this is what we're doing tomorrow, called GeoGebra. 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 And it's on the server, and you're going to get to play with this tomorrow, but I want to show you just a glimpse of how cool this, this program is. See, isn't it cool? Um, but one thing that it can do is it can expand stuff really, 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 really fast. So watch this. I got to make it so I can put in um, put in statements. This is CAS stands for computer algebra system. And if I wanted to, I could get it to expand this. What did that say? Plus 0 decimal 4, 7. And then X minus 4 decimal 8, 0. I press enter. Well, that's a bit of a mess, but you know why? It's because it's 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 calculated to the all the decimal places. So why don't I um ask it to evaluate this um, approximately? Oh, look at that! It's off by one decimal place. That's it. So that's how close we were to getting that exact factoring. And of course, we're not going to use the factor theorem for this. We have to use technology. So we, we use the graphing calculators. And tomorrow, you're going to use this wicked awesome program called GeoGebra to, to do a bunch of stuff um, with polynomials. All right? And that will ease us into review and test time soon, folks. But before you do that, there's some questions that are like this in your textbook to do for homework and have fun with that. Stay classy MCT4C.